All right, welcome. I am so excited to be here with all of you and to host this masterclass today for you. So we are going to dive right in. Please don't hesitate to use the chat box for any questions or any comments. And actually, I love to interact with all of you so that I'm not just talking to my, my screen. <laughs> so I'll be asking you to comment as well. So you can start right away by finding your chat box and just saying, hello, you are here, you are tuning in live. So if you don't already know me, my name is Sarah Small and I'm a holistic business coach as well as a medical intuitive and I believe the pathway to healing inevitably leads you to your purpose. So you'll learn more about me in a second if you're not already familiar. But first, I'd also love for all of you to put into the chat box, where are you listening from today? Hi, Tori, welcome. So glad to see you guys finding the, the right link to this room again. Sorry for the confusion. So where are you from? Post that in the chat box so we can just practice starting to use it. And then next, here is the outline of today's masterclass. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my own story. We're gonna go through uh, my financial breakdown of my personal $13,000 month, some mistakes to avoid, as well as how I crushed my goal this month. We'll talk about and open up to you guys uh, Q&A, as well as some commonly asked questions that I receive. And then we'll end with some takeaways and an offer for you as well, Michelle from California, Natalie from Wisconsin, Christine from Colorado, Rebecca from Michigan, welcome. I am just back in Colorado today. Got back in really late last night from Florida and from vacation and uh, you guys, what is so beautiful about running your own business? Number one, you can take vacation whenever you want. Number two, when I leave my business, it was like a four day vacation, but I came home this morning and it's, it's Sunday, right? You guys know it's Sunday. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to work again. I am so in love with this business. I'm so in love with what I do that I don't want to uh, like take too much time off. And when I do, I'm so invigorated when I come back to be able to create and share. So anyone who's just hopping on, we're using the chat box to say hello and where you're listening from today. And I want to just pause for a moment to lovingly encourage you. First, let's just take a deep breath. And you might be making dinner while you're, while you're listening. You might be driving and listening. You might be multitasking and listening. But I lovingly encourage you to stop scrolling on your phone or on your computer, to set down your devices, and really to give yourself the gift of being super present during this masterclass. You owe it to yourself to be present and just let all of this information digest and process and absorb. So if you do find that you are multitasking, again, sometimes we, it's, it's like inevitable, we, we can't do much about it. Like if you're driving, please don't stop driving. But Otherwise, can you give yourself the gift of, this is probably gonna be even less than an hour to just sit here and absorb, okay? That is my ask of you today. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about me and my story. Welcome some of the other ladies joining. It looks like Carissa's here from New Hampshire, Rachel from Arizona, welcome, welcome. So these are just the bullet points in my story, but I graduated from IIN or the Institute of Integrated, Integrative Nutrition in 2013. And honestly, I really didn't think I would do anything with that certification. When I signed up, when I enrolled, I was just hungry for more health information for my own well being and my own healing of autoimmune disease and chronic illness. And then I found myself in this draining job after around the same time after I also graduated with my master's in international public service. I kind of worked my way up to become the chief of staff for an international nonprofit uh, organization within the industry of food and agriculture, sustainable food and agriculture. But while the work was rewarding in some ways, I was also really underpaid, undervalued, overworked, and so 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 burnt out can anyone relate please let me know in the chat box if you are maybe there right now or that's also why you left your job 
to become an entrepreneur or a coach. I personally racked up $25,000 in credit card debt because I was so underpaid and because the cost of my healthcare and, and managing a chronic illness was so immense. Can you guys relate to that? Where it's like your job ha is one set number. My salary was one set number and my cost of just maintaining my health was an even higher number and then just bills and expenses for like living, right? So I'm sure many of you guys can relate to that. But that led me into $25,000 of debt on credit cards that felt so stressful. And I really, really um, saw that debt as a very negative thing at the time. And for so long, I settled with this feeling of, quote, fine, on, until my brother committed suicide. and life really, really flashed before my eyes. All of a sudden, life seemed really short. Jordan was 25 years old when he committed suicide. And the aftermath of that was like, nothing in life ever felt guaranteed. And I realized that it was time to stop waiting and to go do. And so I quit my job. And it was fucking scary. It was really fucking scary. I laid on the floor and cried afterwards and I was so afraid to even just like make that phone call. But I had always felt that I had something to share with the world and I just didn't know what it was. And I'm gonna be really honest with you guys today, I still wasn't exactly sure what it was when I started my business. Does anyone relate to that? Where maybe they left their job, they decided to start a business, but they still, still weren't actually sure what they were doing or what they were going to do. And I had narrowed it down to autoimmune disease because that's, that was me. I knew I had autoimmune disease, so I could probably help people with it. And, but that really beyond that, I, I wasn't quite sure yet. And I created an Instagram and I started posting and I have no strategy and no freaking idea that this would become the greatest self-development journey of all time. Has anyone felt maybe even just part of that and their own entrepreneurship journey of like saying you wanted to do something because you thought it'd be fun and exciting and then realizing that holy fucking shit, this is actually gonna be a huge personal and self-development journey that I go on. And I created, you guys are arguing in the comments, and I created my first offer. Uh, and if, if you are already a coach, I'd, like, I'd love for you to reflect on your own first offer. You can share it with us in the box if you want. And mine was a one-on-one was -on -one coaching program for three months, and it was extremely underpriced. And I just didn't have the confidence yet. I didn't have the confidence to, to charge what I was worth. And I was so unsure of myself. And well, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. But it was through mistakes and failure. And I don't think failure is always a bad thing or even really ever a bad thing. So, so through mistakes and failure and experimenting, through all that, I was able to learn and grow and get into alignment with my true purpose. So, so much has changed that first year in business. And technically, my first year in business was also while I was working uh, full time and I made around $8,000 that year in business. Now, flash forward to last month, February of 2019, where I made $13,000, more than the whole first year in my business. And when I started that job, uh, which by the end of it, I was making around $30,000. But in the beginning, the first year, I was making $20,000. So that $13, and living in Chicago. <laughs> and so that $13,000 was also more than half of my salary in that old nonprofit career. And it's been almost, just to give you guys perspective, it's been almost almost two and a half years since I've been in business. And I just got back from vacation. I'm still a little red and sunburnt. I was in vacation in Florida with my fiance. And I made around $1,000 while I was just totally unplugged from my phone and my computer and while I was on vacation. And I mean, that's the dream, right? Like you get to go sit on a beach and you get to get PayPal notifications popping into your inbox and you get to celebrate each and every one and say, thank you universe, more please. Thank you universe, there's more where that fucking came from. And it's, it's so good to feel in alignment with your purpose. 
And I truly feel like I am living, living now in alignment with my soul. And this happened for many, many reasons and through many, many different decisions, which I'm going to be teaching you today. But I just want to pause for a second, another second here, which is to, in order to tell you and reassure you that you are all just as capable of creating your own pain to purpose story as I am. I'm not special. Like I'm special. Yes, I'm freaking unicorn. We're all special, but I'm not any, any different. Like I don't have some magical tool that no one else has. Like we are all special on our all right, own right. But then again, we're not special at the same time because this is not something that any of you cannot do. You all can do this too. So I just want you to know that you are all capable and I know that you're dying to see where that $13,000 came from. So let me show you a sneak peek. So here's a little sneak peek of my $13,000 month. And um, there, you, there's eight main categories. Right now you're just seeing the, the percentages, which I will, will break down for you and get very detailed with you as we go throughout this masterclass. But here's just a sense of you can see that there's one large piece there where most of my income comes from and then seven other smaller pieces that is where the rest of my income comes from. Okay, so I want to, before we go into a little bit more teaching and learning, like to get to know you all first. So... I want you guys to put in the comment box, are you currently or uh, co currently coaching or, or working as an entrepreneur or are you aspiring to? Maybe you relate to what I was talking about where you're like, I'm burnt out, underpaid, undervalued, overworked, and I want to leave this job. And if that's the case, you can also let us know this is just something you're aspiring towards, okay? Next. What is your business? If you are already in business, this is actually a really good opportunity for you to say super concisely what it is you do. That in itself can be challenging for us, and it's something I teach in my Launch Your Wellness business course, but what is your actual business? What is it, or who is it that you help, and how do you help them? Love for you guys to put that in the box as well. I don't have to be shy here, there's no right or wrong. So Christine, like she says, she's an aspiring coach. This is a, probably a dream for her and a dream that's totally, totally attainable. Currently a nutrition therapist who helps someone with autoimmune disease feel less alone as they work on healing. Beautiful. And now if you feel comfortable, you can say this privately to me and I won't share it with anybody or you can post it to everybody. What is your current income, your monthly, current monthly income or maybe an average monthly income? But then what is also your goal? What is your monthly income goal? So you could say something like my current income is $1,000 a month, but that's not paying all the bills. So my goal is I want to get to a five or six K K month as soon as possible. Wellness coach, current income 160 a month. Yep, uh, just beginning. Lots of different certifications. Awesome, Mandy. Zero dollars to, oh, she wants to get her first five figure month, 10K month. Awesome. I coach those with complex medical histories. Goal is $20,000 plus months. Perfect. So again, there's no right or wrong here. It's just simply getting to know um, the audience that I'm speaking to and also, uh, allowing you guys to share a little bit and practice saying what it is that you do because uh, again that can be challenging in itself to be clear and concise about who it is that you serve and what it is that you offer them. Awesome. I hope you guys are reading each other's comments as well. Okay, next. So here are five pretty simple mistakes that I made in my business in the first couple years. The first is that I, sorry, I'm moving this chat box around. <laughs> I only had one offer. So again, th this is not wrong per se, and there are very successful entrepreneurs that only have one offer, but if you choose to have one offer, it needs to be one that is sustainable. So my one offer was one-on-one -on -one coaching at $150 a month, you guys. One-on-one -on -one coaching, $150 a month. That's not sustainable at all. 
And so what it would, I mean, I, I could take out the calculator. I bring the calculator out with my clients a lot because I like to, I also like math. I'm the intuitive, I'm the energy, but I also like to think in practical ways and see, does this actually add up? Does the math work? And I mean, I would have had to have like a hundred clients in order for me to, to be able to hit my income goals. So that one offer at a low price point was a, was a simple mistake, but also a pretty detrimental one in the beginning because there was no way I was going to hit my income goal and also be able to take care of myself and maintain my boundaries and my energy and not go into autoimmune flares trying to serve a hundred people individually one on one. Now, while I, I say like it's, it's, a mistake to have one offer. If your one offer was a $10,000 a month one-on-one -on -one high investment coaching package and you had five clients a month at 10, 10K, that's a 50K a month, that is sustainable. That feels really fucking good, right? Like raise your hand if you would love to have five clients at $10,000 a month and easily bring in 50K. So Again, we all have to start somewhere, and so you're not going to launch like five things at once. But one of my mistakes was having one low price offer that what did, didn't add up to what my income goal was. So that's that's why I want to bring that up today because there's a difference between having an offer that's 10k a month and a difference between having one that's 150 and how many clients you need to be able to hit your income goals. Next, never taking a break. Who is a perfectionist, recovering perfectionist, type A, overachiever, any of the above? <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> and I think this is really common and it makes us really, really good entrepreneurs. It makes us really, really good. It's not something we have to be ashamed of. We do not have to feel guilty or ashamed for being the perfectionist or for being an overachiever, but it is important for us to take breaks. And I held myself to extremely high standards. And what that caused me to do is then teeter constantly on burnout. And I did go into autoimmune flares and I was crashing at 2 p.m. And I was having to take naps. And it was like, how the hell am I ever gonna have a successful business if I can't get through the day without a nap? That was the, the voice and conversation that was going on in my head. And because I never took a break because I was so afraid. I was so stuck in fear of what, oh my God, if I, if I stop, if I take a break, that I might not make money, that instead of that hard work paying off and, and like, again, it's not, we don't have to be feel guilty for working hard, but what it did is it went to like an extreme of then causing burnout. So I think there's a fine line there of, of putting your heart and soul into something and showing up and doing the work and pushing yourself so hard and holding yourself to such high standards that it inevitably leads to burnout. Next mistake I made was just not doing the inner work. I thought, okay, if I just write out a business plan, you know, I, I went to grad school, it wasn't business school, but I have my master's degree and I thought very strategically, I thought in the masculine energy and that's a lot of what our school system is, our, our um, public school system and just like our continuing education as well is in this masculine mindset. And so I thought, okay, well, if I just have the strategy, if I just do the damn thing, then, then I'll be successful and I'll make money. And that ended up being very, very false for me because the inner work was what ultimately allowed me to have my breakthroughs, multiple, multiple breakthroughs. So as you can see in the slide, your financial success is an indication of your internal belief system. So if you don't believe that you can make money, if you don't believe that you're worthy of having 10 clients or five clients or whatever your goal is, then, or charging a certain number, then how is that going to come into your, your energetic field, your human body field, your aura space? You can't hold that container for five clients if you don't believe you're worthy of those clients. And so doing the inner work, I just cannot, cannot stress enough. It is so important in being able to build the foundation of your successful business. My next mistake is waiting to hire a coach, you guys. And I, I mean this <laughs> with all my heart and soul, it's so worth it to have a coach. And I, I don't think there's any shame, like I've heard this from clients before where they're like, well, I'm a coach, so why should I have a coach? And there's no shame in that. We all need support. Like, you're, it's just like when you go to the, the, the doctor and <clears throat> you're not going to um, go to, 
the, well, let's go like doctor and like you're getting your car serviced, okay? So if you broke your arm, you're not gonna go to the guy who services your car, and if you need an oil change, you're not gonna go to the surgeon who's gonna fix your arm. People are specialized in specific areas for a reason, and they have this expertise, and so why not use their expertise to be able to take quantum fucking leaps in your business and stop playing small and stop holding yourself back? A coach is also somebody who gives you permission. Not that you need permission, but oftentimes, they give you the permission to step into your true power and start to raise your prices and they help you integrate the energy with the strategy and so I waited out of fear there's a lot of fear in the beginning of starting your business and I waited and I waited and I waited and I said that's too much it's too much I can't afford that I can't afford that all oh, so so limiting and such a lack of mindset until finally I was like you know what I might have to give up this business if I don't figure out how to make it more sustainable and then I decided to hire a coach and everything changed and so there's no um like problem with a coach hiring a coach. I think we all should have coaches. I still have a coach and it is more than, um, not okay, but you are more than worthy enough in the investment in a coach. So I waited for a while to hire a coach. I wish I hadn't, honestly. Then lastly, a little mistake that I made was talking about my, my business or even treating my business like a hobby. So in that first year, like I said, I made $8,000, but I was really treating it like a hobby because I was still um, in my full-time business. And there's nothing wrong with kind of like slowly starting to funnel out of your full-time job. I don't think there's something wrong with that. But I do believe that when you start a business, you need to start treating it like a freaking business, talking about it like a business. When your friends ask you what this is all about and what you're up to, I don't want you to play small. I don't want you to just kind of like brush it off your shoulder. Stand in your power as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman, as a freaking female CEO and talk about your business like a business, not a hobby. This is something for me that is my livelihood. It's not just something that I do for fun, even though it is really, really fun. It's also what pays my bills. And so we have to treat it with respect. We have to treat it as if it is our livelihood. And so own the fact that you're an entrepreneur. Yes, I'm sure there's going to be fear, but when you start to move past that fear and allow yourself to step into owning and, and this confidence of like, yeah, I am a health coach. Yeah, I am a nutritional therapy practitioner. Yeah, I am an energy healer. Whatever you are, you want to be, you aspire to be, can you stand in that with freaking power instead of backing away from that in any conversations? So it's in the way that you talk about it to people when people ask you or you just are in casual conversation, but it's also in the way that you treat your business. So we have to treat our business we have to, like, a, like a business by putting boundaries around it, like a container of boundaries around it, and also um, by taking it seriously, right? And, and maybe even like outsourcing or hiring help and implementing strategy. Okay, next, and uh, post any questions you guys have so far in the box. Switch my slide. So those are some of the mistakes I made, and I'm gonna walk and talk here for a second because I just got back from vacation and my charger is still in my, in my luggage. So as we talk about the mistakes I've made, let's also talk about some of the ways that I crushed this month and crushed this goal. Also, if you guys can't already tell, like being an entrepreneur is the most imperfect thing in the world. Like it's just imperfect. Your, your stuff comes up and everything starts to rustle to the surface, all of this limiting belief, all of the things that maybe you doubt within yourself come to the surface and we're like, oh my God, it's not perfect, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. I just went to pick up my, my freaking computer charger in the mid middle of this master class. <laughs> like, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not wearing makeup, not wearing makeup. I'm a little sunburned. So if any of that like really silly, silly stuff is holding you guys back, Please do not let it anymore. Please do not. So here are some of the ways that I have crushed my goals. Number one, I did not do it alone. I did not do it alone. And as I mentioned, I have a coach and full disclosure, like my coach helps me a lot and it's somebody, a woman, <laughs> I've worked with male and female coaches, but currently working with a female coach who is in my corner. She's in my corner and it feels so 
good to have somebody in your corner when oftentimes an entre in the world of entrepreneurship, you can feel really, really alone. I also have an assistant who helps me stay sane and organized and uh, helps me build my social media presence. But I didn't start with that team. I started with just community. Community, soul sisters, biz besties, who were also and still are in this field. Tori's on today. She's one of them, one of my biz besties. So like women like Tori and so many others who are in my circle, they are, are people I count on. I lean into when I need that soul sisterhood, when I need someone to bounce ideas off of. And so when you are sitting behind your computer every single day, it is so easy to feel like no one cares, no one's in my corner. But one of the ways I hit this $13,000 month was pulling myself out of that corner. We all have a choice. We can, we can let ourselves feel alone in this process, or we can ask for help. We can ask for help. We can invest in ourselves. It doesn't have to even be a financial investment. It can also be just like a peer mastermind that you pull together. And there's it's just something you guys put your time and energy into and not even something you're, you're paying for. However, I do always recommend working with a coach. So if you're not where you want to be today, consider Am I trying to do this alone? Are you trying to do this alone? And why? Why do you feel like you have to do it alone? And instead, maybe we can shift into asking for support and realizing that asking for support does not make you weak. All right. So uh, next here is my belief system. So I raised my energetic maximum and minimum to meet my desires. And I've talked about this on my Instagram story before. I'll just talk about it briefly here, which is that uh, I like to use a bank account as an example, or maybe your monthly income. Let's use monthly income because that's more of the theme of today. So if your minimum monthly income each month was $1,000 and you're like, I, there's no way I'm going to bring in less than $1,000 this month. That would be your energetic minimum. Your maximum might be, let's say, like $5,000. So if your maximum is $5,000, then anything between 1K and 5K monthly is going to be in your comfort zone. It's going to feel good, and it's going to feel safe for your ego, that part of you that wants to keep you safe. And then maybe you get um, like an unexpected gift of some money and you get a few extra clients than you were expecting that month and you get a 7k month. It's outside of your energetic maximum and we don't ever really consider that having more money is then a, a bad thing, but our ego, our fear-based thought belief system can perceive that as a bad thing to have $7,000 and then we get afraid. You're like, oh my God, this is way too, I can't, the $7,000, holy shit. This is like too much money. I better have something I need to pay for that's two grand. I better spend it on something. We, we, we start to self-sabotage. And so if, in, in my case, getting to a $13,000 $13, month, if um, my maximum was $10,000 and then I hit a $13,000 month, then it's possible that I would feel unsafe, unstable, ungrounded with more money. And so when I address that in myself and realize that maybe I was like not energetically feeling safe around more money, I had to raise that bar. I had to say, okay, I'm going to hold space for anywhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars in my comfort zone this month, instead of like between where it was for a while. And I, again, I'm very fully transparent with all of you guys. I was stuck between the five and ten k for for like a year, and so that five and ten k was like my energetic minimum at 5k my maximum at 10k and I was just trying to break through it and break through it and going why can't I break through it and then I realized well my maximum's ten thousand dollars and so if my maximum's ten thousand dollars I'm not going to hold it's like it's like a, a, a cup and so like at at ten thousand dollars your cup is full and there's not space for any more to enter your bank account to come in through your business and so you, again, are, it's like your door, your, it's almost like your doors are closed for business. And they're like, no, no more. <laughs> There's no more, no more. Cl like, a client may, maybe was like, oh, I'm thinking about working with you. And then she's like, she might've changed her mind. 
And if she had said yes, it would have put you over your 10K or my 10K. And that's a good indication if anything like that happens to you, that you might have a maximum that you want to raise. So I, I go into the how to raise that in my coaching programs, but this is how I personally did it by uh, more the what of what I did to get here was raise my own and then act as if you're already that five figure monthly earner or if you're starting at zero like some of you mentioned uh, you know what would it feel like to earn your first thousand dollars in your business how can you act as if you're already that woman I worked through massive fear and through inner child work that's another thing very related to our energetic maxims and minimums is my 31 year old self was not necessarily afraid at all of making $13,000 $13, per month and continuing to make $13,000 or more per month. But six year old Sarah was scared shitless. She was like, it was like, um, un kind of like comprehensible for her. The $13,000 $13, was was such a big amount for six-year-old Sarah that she was really afraid of it. So I had to go back and do the inner child work to also create the space for this to manifest. Other thing that helped me crush my goal this month, last month, February, and I'm kind of going to continue to do it for March, but was just learning to trust. And it, it sounds um, so simple, but then I think this is one of the questions I get most from people, which is, how do I, how do I learn to trust? How, how do I trust more? And part of, as you guys can see in the slide here, manifesting your biggest, hairiest, audacious goals, which is a, also an acronym, your bags, big, hairy, audacious goals, is believing that they will become tangible even when they look like they won't. This is one of my favorite ways to start to practice trust is the night before a cart closes. And this happened for me with my, my latest launch with Launch Your Wellness Biz, a 30-day program. I had, I think, 10 people in the program uh, up until 48 hours before the cart closed. My goal was 20. And so we can choose always how we react. And I could have choosed at 48 hours before the cart closed to say, oh my gosh, I failed. I'm not going to get 20 people. Or... Um, I, maybe I should just throw in the towel or cancel this program or something, but I continued to trust again, this is a good way to practice with it, that there would be 10 more people by the end of 48 hours. And there was 12 more people by the end of 48 hours. There's 22 women in that program right now today, the last 48 hours of a launch are critical. And in my business, that's where I always get the most sales. And I always trust that those people are going to come in in those last 48 hours. And so while we can choose to be hard on ourselves, think we failed, instead, you turn to trust. You decide to make this choice of, I believe that people are still coming. Just one example. This can be many, many other ways. Lastly, crushing the goals, creating the framework. My coach helped me with this, and I also help, I help women with this too. It's a lot easier to um, actually see it from the outside than from the inside because sometimes if you, if you have started your business you get so just like invested and kind of like rose uh rose quartz colored glasses around your business and your day-to-day -day process processes in your business you might not even realize that you don't have the framework and i mentioned this a little bit uh, before kind of um, hinted towards it it's like my first offer was a $150 a month program, a one-on-one, -on -one, which was very, very underpriced. And that was not setting up the foundation and framework for my financial goals. So here's a little exercise you can all do. Look at your income goal. You guys said it before when we started. And now look at what you're currently offering and the price point that you offer it at. Take out your iPhone, pull out the, the calculator app, and see if your goal is even possible. Or if you have the energy to hold space for that many people, you have to have the framework for the goal in order for you to really hold that container for it to manifest. So I noticed that I didn't exactly, it was like close, but it wasn't quite there. I had the framework for a solid eight to nine K month down. I didn't really have the framework for 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 K in place. Now I do, and now it's possible. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. So we can do frameworks in our offers, we can do frameworks in our energy, but 
in all in all, we have to have the framework for this to be possible. Okay. Going on to a little bit um, of, this is again like my, my personal kind of like theory, opinion, which is that there are, if we have our pie graph in front of us, 80% of what creates your success in your business is the energetic alignment. And 20% is the, you know, pushing posts, the, the implementation. So we, this is where I, I messed up, frankly, in the beginning of my business was that I was, you know, 99% implementation and like a 1% energy. And that just doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't, first of all, it doesn't feel good. Second, it didn't work for me. And so now I've switched this and seen huge differences in my business as a result of 80%-ish, I mean, this is like not a hard line, but 80-ish percent energy and 20% implementation. And so, you know, you could write two posts and you could, you could, for 30 minutes, like let's say you put, you put a timer on your, on your phone for 30 minutes and you wrote down two different posts within those that two different 30 minute sections of the time. The outcome of post one, that first 30 minutes, and the outcome of post two, that second 30 minutes, could become dramatically different based on the energy you put into the post. Has anyone seen this in their own posting on social media of like the energy you put into one post might be different than the energy you put into one post and as a result, it converts and the result, the outcome, is drastically different based on the energy you put into it. So that's kind of a simple visualization for you visual learners out there to realize like the energy you put into something is very different than the implementation for both of those is the same. So each time you're 30 minutes writing and pushing posts, that's the same, same implementation, but the energy you put into post one and post two, like let's say post one is like you're having a really shitty day and uh, you're really sad. And so you, you're, it's like, Maybe you quite, haven't quite processed your own stuff yet, and that, that comes out into your post. Not that you can't post when you're sad, but if you're not, haven't processed your own stuff first, and then you choose to post, it might come out and, and not maybe the way that you intended, versus a post that you spend 30 minutes on where you're just like so high vibe. The energy behind those are very, very different. Okay, are you guys ready for the official breakdown of my $13,000 a month? Here we go. And uh, unfortunately, I noticed as I, I was downloading these slides, some of them are so small, you can't actually, they didn't get labeled, but I'll make sure to read them off to you. So as you can see, the majority, 56% of my business comes from group programs and also payment plans. So let me explain that to you. The first, and let's take February as an example, although this is pretty um, uh, common for me every month is I usually have a, at least 50% of my income does come from group programs and payment plans. So the group program part of that is, for example, in February, I launched a program called Launch Your Wellness Biz for beginning entrepreneurs who want to build a foundation of their business. And that was about a seven or $8,000 launch. Now I didn't bring in cash seven or $8,000 from that launch yet because some people are on payment plans. So the investment was $333, but some people invested 167 and then next month they'll, they'll get charged the additional, the other half, the other $167. And so this is cash in the bank in, in this pie graph, not booked, this is what we talk about in the coaching field. There's like cash in the bank and then there's money booked. So I've already booked out like another probably two or three grand this month from payment plans last month, but I don't count that in my monthly income. Does that make sense? So you're um, in this 56%. It is the money that I actually have in the bank from that course, Launch Your Wellness Biz, plus any payment plans from previous programs that came in during February. So let's see, uh, January, I, I uh, launched 21 Days of Healing. So in February, I was still making money from 21 Days of Healing, but through payment plans. In December, I launched 
healing activation portal. And so there was a three month payment option for that course. So I'm still getting paid in February for the course I launched in December because of payment plans. So I have both the money people have invested in a, a program I launched that month and payments that are coming in from previous programs that were just on auto pay. That makes up that 56%. Any questions, please let me know. I want this to be crystal clear for you guys. Next, uh, let's just go around the circle. So one-on-one -on -one clients, 10%. And you guys can easily do the math. So if you just do like 50, let's see, what would you do? You would, you would do 13,000 um, times 0.56. Is that, yeah, times 0.56. And that would give you a cash number. This is just a percentage. But there's this is full transparency. You just have to do the math on your own. <laughs> so one-on-one uh, -on -one clients is about 10% of my monthly income for February. Some months it's higher, some months it's lower. This is one snapshot of my business. So this is gonna be people who I work with, um, both business coaching and um, healing clients. Uh, and then I think the one that you're missing there is in between the one-on-one -on -one clients in doTERRA, which is cost of, of elimination. Um, you know, I don't, I have to do a process of elimination the other way. <laughs> so see which one I didn't talk about. I wish I put all of, all of them up there. So let's go the opposite way. Mastermind, um, 17%. So I host a mastermind called the empath entrepreneur mastermind. And this is a small group, usually four to six women. And so again, that's all of their monthly payments that are coming in for the mastermind. And then I teach yoga, and so that's 3% of my income, which I do count as like my overall income for the month, but is not um, a, a huge proportion or percentage of it. Uh, affiliate income, so I can actually give you guys the number on this. It was $1,100 this past month I made in affiliate income. So this uh, is, I have, I'm, I'm an affiliate for a lot of different companies and other brands and businesses. IIN is usually the one I make the biggest percentage of, of affiliate income from, but I'm also like an Amazon affiliate, a CBD oil affiliate, a Yoni egg affiliate. Um, I could go on and on. So I, I highly recommend that if you're going to be recommending products that, uh, that have an affiliate program, then be, a, if you're already using it, you love it, you're sharing it with your, your, your audience become an affiliate for them. And that's a different time to teach about affiliates. I make 8% last month of affiliate income. Uh, and then doTERRA. So doTERRA last month was, um, first of all, if you guys aren't familiar, doTERRA is an essential oils uh, company and work marketing company. And so I have built a team. I sell oils. I use oils every single day. And uh, that was 3% of my income last month. Now, the month before, it was probably like 10%. But February, I didn't do a damn thing. I didn't do a damn thing in my doTERRA business. I think I just like naturally enrolled like two or three people plus I get a, a kind of like a base level income from the team that I have built over time each month. But this is putting zero effort into it that I made that 3%. And then here's our process of, of elimination is that other 2.7%, that's what it was, <laughs> is um, add-ons. So this is something I don't usually have as a little category, but last month, uh, and actually into this month as well, with my course Launch Your Wellness Business, and this is a creative idea that I just started doing that I really like, you guys wanna take it. Uh, the course, again, was $333, but I gave them highly, highly discounted 25 minute calls with me because what happens is, and sometimes in group programs in general, is people want to ask you one-on-one. -on -one. They want to get on the phone with you. They have extra questions. And especially in this course, women are defining their niche. They're trying to figure out like, we talked about before, what do I actually want to do in this business? And some of them need someone to bounce ideas off of outside of that group program. So I added on $33 calls for 25 minutes, which is highly, highly discounted, but they had already invested in my program. So it just made it like a really easy yes for them and um, ended up making, let's see, I wrote it down on here, add-ons, uh, it's like $600 last month just from those calls. So it's kind of like as if two more people would have enrolled in the program just from add-on calls 
and that was 2.7% 2, 2 of my income. And then there's a teeny, 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 tiny little sliver that you can barely see between the affiliate income and doTERRA, which is 0.3%. And the reason I wanted to include it and highlight it is because you have to leave room for the miracles, my friends. You have to leave room for the miracles. And I was just over $13,000. And, um, I think it was about a hundred maybe ish dollars that I got from total. I got a check in the mail for $4 <laughs> as a rebate for my dog's vitamins. And I got a check in the mail for $16 from the government. And I got $20 from Poshmark because I sold a dress. So like, you know what? Those were all unexpected. Like just like I'm open to receive the miracle. And ultimately that, hundred ish dollars of random ass things coming in push like just got me over thirteen thousand dollars last month so it does not matter if you are picking up a quarter off the street or you just got a two thousand dollar pay in full client i i live by just like this this mon motto mantra of of like thank you universe more please there's more where this came from i pick up every fucking penny i see on the street every dime every quarter because i want to show money that i respect it and that i appreciate it and so all of those teeny tiny little things in that three per point point not even three point three percent pushed me over thirteen thousand all right so this is the breakdown what questions do you guys have? Please let me know in the comment box. If you have any questions really about anything, it can be about my $13,000 month or otherwise energetic or str strategic within building your own business. While you guys are thinking about that, um, these are some questions that are both, both commonly asked and actually asked by my uh, Facebook group, Autoimmune Tribe, before um, this training today. So the first is how do you create your content? And again, this could be a whole training in itself, but I'm an intuitive being and I'm an intuitive being in all areas of my life. So I create my content intuitively too. And ideas, I don't know about you guys, but like ideas pop into my head at the weirdest random times. And so I use my app, the notes app on my phone and I just jot down like little teeny, like one-liner ideas to come back to later and then write about. And I like to get in the zone when I'm writing and like let it be sacred and really hold this container for like inspired action. Again, there's a difference between that 30 minutes you might've taken to write a post and the energy behind option one and option two that then converts into how it's received. Of course, there's like algorithms and other things that you have to go up against, but like what if we just work with those? Uh, and one of the things that helps me create my content the most, the most, is that I have a super clear idea of who I am talking to with all of my content, and that helps me so, so much. So for example, today's audience, all of you, I, before I created any of these slides, did anything, like took my notebook out. I always have a notebook by me. I took my notebook out, and I was like, who is this woman who's listening? Who is she? What are her dreams? What are her desires? What are her um, pain points? What are her challenges? And when I do that before I write a sales page, before I write a post, before I create a master class, all of that helps me create clear and concise content that speaks specifically to my ideal client instead of this big, broad, vague thing. That doesn't, in my experience again, does not inspire action on the other end for people to invest, to like, to comment, follow, et cetera, to sign up for a masterclass, unless they know you're talking to them. And so one of the things I do in all my content is, is get really crystal clear on who I am talking to. I do it intuitively. I like to hold a container and just like create sacred space around it. That doesn't mean that I've never like wrote a post on the toilet before because that's happened before too but when I can I like light my stage and put my crystals up and just full transparency this is what happens um let's go to your guys questions for a second so how did you figure out what exactly you wanted to offer intuitively led so yes I was intuitively led but also through experimentation like there's so much experimenting in the beginning of your business where you just go and you do and you create and you just try 
And it's not all going to be beautiful and it's not always going to be successful either. But those failures are beautiful opportunities for you to learn, to grow, to expand into the entrepreneur that you want to be and find clarity on who it is that you really do want to serve. And sometimes you figure out who you do want to serve by figuring out who you don't want to serve. So lots and lots and lots of experimenting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will you be offering Launch Your Wellness Biz again anytime soon? It's, it's, our, it's available right now. So if you just go to autoimmunetribecourses.com and then you'll see like little squares of all the different courses I have. And Launch Your Wellness Biz is currently available for $333 or two payments of $167. And you can start now if you want. Hey, Tor. Two questions. Is there any strategy around how long you leave the cart open space at your launches? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to answer that one first. Uh, I like to, it, okay. First it depends on what I'm launching. So, and how many people I'm holding space for. So for example, if I'm holding space for launch your wellness biz, um, 20 people, that's going to take me longer to fill those spots, those 20 spots, than the program I'm launching next, which is Empath Entrepreneur Mastermind, which is just five or six spots. So when I'm trying to fill 20 spots, I need more time than when I'm trying to fill five spots. And then that, I mean, that's true to some extent, but you also have to take in the price point. So you know, the price point for Empath Entrepreneur Mastermind is 444 per month for four months versus Launch Your Wellness Biz one time 333. And so that also kind of differs it. Uh, but in general, I stick to two or three weeks pretty much always. In the beginning of my business and how I coach my clients is if it's their first launch, I tell them to usually give themselves a month because they don't have the audience yet. And so it's going to take them more time to find the ideal clients that might not even be following them, let alone like, you know, for me, it's like, I already have these warm and hot leads that are in the container that are in my communities. And so they're potentially ready to buy. But if you have 200 followers on Instagram or something and you don't have the, you don't have the following yet, it's going to take you longer to, to fill the container, then pitch to the container and then hit your goal. So in the beginning I give, I was giving myself longer. Now two or three weeks is like my magic kind of sauce where also I don't like to draw it out much longer cause it's energetically draining sometimes. And I'm trying to get better. I'm getting better at protecting my own energy around the launch and not letting it be draining, but sometimes it still is. And so I, um, leave it open two to three weeks. And I also strategize within those two to three weeks. I've got like a whole plan that I go through in order to hit my goal. And as I mentioned before, those last 48 hours are like, just like, I don't it just run it. It's like a magnet. Everyone runs in that, which is, it's fun, but it's exhilarating. And it really, um, allows you to practice trust. Okay. I hovered between four to six K and just hit my first 10 K month. Let's celebrate Tori in the comments. Fuck yes. So from here, I would make my energetic minimum 10K now and then increase the max. So, okay. So if you just hit your 10K, I want you to increase your maximum to a little above your next goal. So let's say your next goal is a 12K month, then I would probably make your maximum like a, like a 13K. And then I would um, bring your minimum up so if you look at your, like, let's use a bank account as an example. If you look at your bank account and, and anything under like 2K kind of like is like, ooh, where's the money? I don't know. Then I want you to also bring that minimum up to a number that is above any sort of fear inducing number. So that's going to be, I can't tell you what that's going to be, but like uh, you might want your four to six kind of hovering zone to be in the past. And so, I mean, assuming you want that to be in the past and you want your 10K to be your new normal, right? So I would bring your minimum up to at least 6K. And then I would bring your maximum up to, the, it, let's say you are going for a 12K next, then I'd bring it up to a 13K. So uh, that creates a range for you of um, like a new comfort zone versus the old. And then you can, you, that's, you're not gonna stay there forever. You're gonna keep raising it and raising it and raising it. How do you energetically and literally cultivate a larger, more engaging community on social media? That could be a whole week training, but let me see what I can do. So um, here are some like quick tips. I covered this in Launch Your Wellness Business course. 
I have a whole two whole like days on Facebook nurturing your Facebook community and nurturing your Instagram community because each social media outlet or platform also needs to be treated in a different way. And so um, I'm going to speak in broad terms here, uh, which is build the, the know, like, and trust factor with your community. People want to know you. Some uh, people have come to me and they're like, oh, I shouldn't post pictures of like my dog or my, I don't know, maybe they're not like a food or nutrition coach. Like I saw they shouldn't post pictures of their food. No, post all of that. You don't have to post like literally all of that, but let people get to know you beyond just what you do as a coach, as a business. So no, and then they get to like you. So that allows you to make, to, to feel like, um, like they're getting to know you. Like they're almost like your friend. You want them to feel like, Hey, I could be, I could be her friend. I know we don't really know each other, but like we could be friends. Hopefully you guys all feel that way about me and my social media. You're like, Hey, we could be friends. I don't actually, never actually met you, but like we could be friends. And so that's that like factor of, um, you know, she probably agrees with your, um, beliefs or like your lifestyle. And like, if you go to yoga, she probably like wants to go to yoga with you. So you're building the know, like, and then trust and trust is, uh, created through consistency through providing value, through showing up, through responding to people's comments, DMs, liking their comments, just really building that trust of like, oh, I can depend on her. She knows what she's talking about. She's an authority figure. She has something to share. She has knowledge. So to build that no like, and trust factor across all social media platforms can really help you engage um, your community, build your community, grow your community, and beyond. Uh, that's my very short answer. There's so much more to it, but hopefully that's a good start. Let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Michelle, uh, these women that you're holding space for, for your programs, are you mostly finding them through Instagram? Is there other places you can energetically find clients that aren't on social media? Absolutely. So my biggest, well, I guess now it's actually Pinterest, but, um, so my Pinterest is like 1.3 million monthly viewers. Social media, uh, social media, Instagram's to around 28,000 followers. Uh, but I interact more on a one-on-one -on -one basis on Instagram way more than I do on Pinterest. So, uh, that's yes, primarily like the container within which I find my clients, but also my Facebook group, which has 15, 1600 people in it. And that doesn't mean that like, even if that, I spend as just as much time in the, in the 1600 person Facebook group as I do on Instagram because I like it. And because those 1600 people I see as hot leads who might want to, who might want to invest in my program because they chose to push requests to join the group. They answered three questions. Like they found me. It didn't just show up in their newsfeed the way that Instagram pictures can. So I think of them as, as very hot leads compared to Instagram followers who are like, you know, I think I have like 20% male followers who are probably never going to invest in my programs. So, um, on Instagram, yes, I find clients, but my most recent uh, program, two of my clients were from, um, were coworkers from the yoga studio I teach at. And, um, my mom and my aunt and my sister and my best friends have invested in my programs before too. And I already knew them. I didn't find them on social media. And, uh, I have old people from high school and college who have also invested in my programs, which is also to, like not discredit or discount the power of posting on your personal Facebook page because you never know who's listening, who's watching and who's interested and wants to purchase from you. And they already know you like you trust you. So they are, they're a hot lead as well. So, um, yes, while I find most of my clients on social media, I just want to remind you that it's possible to find people outside of social media as well. You could get so, so creative with this or host in-person workshops or in-person, um, like meetups or anything like that. Okay. Uh, what are your tips for getting started on Pinterest? <laughs> 1600. I wrote it was 300. Yes. My Facebook group has like just all been organic growth. Like mostly I don't, I, well, I ask people, you guys can do this. I ask people how they find you. It's really good market research. When you ask to join my group, I ask you how you found it. And, and I get to see, it's like, Google search, Facebook search, my friend told me about it, 
Um, I listened to your podcast. You linked it to it on your podcast. I um, saw it on your Instagram link tree. You posted it like swipe up in your Instagram story. People find it in all different ways. So Pinterest though, um, make boards um, that are like the pillars of your business. Again, this is like a two second um, like training, but make boards that are the pillars of your, your business. So I have like one on empaths, one on intuition, one on essential oils for chronic illness and autoimmune disease. What are the pillars of your business? Build boards based off that. Make sure you're adding your own um, individual or um, personal, original, that's the word I'm looking for, your own original content. You can use Canva, you know, Pinterest dimensions. Uh, and Tori has a podcast, so that's, a, that's, I would start there. I would make a Pinterest image for every podcast episode you publish and then put that onto Pinterest as original content. But I would also repin uh, and put onto your boards other people's content as well so that you're constantly creating kind of con content for people to want to follow you. You can use an app called, uh, or like program on your computer called Tailwind to pre-schedule out all of that. So that's like, sorry, she's into training. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, do you guys want me to answer these other commonly asked questions or do you have any other ones? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what, where was I? So how much time did you have to invest? So this is a question from somebody in the Facebook group. And <clears throat> first, I, the first thing that, sh that stood out to me was the language she used, which is, or like the, the verbiage she used, which is have to. And I didn't have to do any of this. I didn't have to do anything in my life. I chose to. I chose to. And I chose to invest a lot of time into my business because I absolutely love it. And that's up to each of us individually. And I know now that it will not always require me to be so involved and invest so much time throughout each week. But honestly, I love answering all my DMs. I answer every single DM on Instagram and I show up live and I give free value and I host masterclasses like this because I enjoy it. Um, so I didn't have to do any of this, but I chose to. And it, it was a big time investment. I can't give you a number. I have no idea, <laughs> but um, I, don't tra I don't track it either. But I, I, mostly I just want to bring it to attention into the surface is like I chose to do all of this. I didn't have to do any of it. My typical day, my, my typical day varies and I, because I want it to. So if you're someone who likes um, routine every day and you like to have like the same routine, then I would build your business around that. I don't. I like every day to be different. So Mondays are like my get my shit together day and prepare for the week and mostly podcast days as well. And then on Tuesdays and Wednesdays are our full clients, like clients um, all day, Tuesday, all day, Wednesday. Uh, or sometimes I'm also hosting my group programs, like little uh, trainings or lessons for my group. Uh, Thursday is more of a community cultivating uh, day where I go into any current programs or my mastermind and I answer and I, I just like love on and nurture my community. Uh, and then Fridays are more of a, uh, well, either a day, sometimes we go snowboarding, <laughs> sometimes they're a day off <laughs> and uh, sometimes they're uh, just like freedom days to just like, what do I want to do today? I don't have to do anything. What do I want to do? Uh, and then I teach yoga um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday as well, just one class each of those days. Did I get that right? No, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday morning. And Saturday morning is my favorite class of the week to teach. And a lot of people would hate that. And they're like, I don't want to teach. I love to teach on Saturday mornings. So I do it. And there's like 60 people every Saturday. And it just feels like so loving and so fulfilling. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> Major takeaways. Tori's question. What are your weekly money rituals to keep a consistent money mindset? I light my sage. I pull out a piece of paper. This might sound super silly, but I pull out a, like a, just like a computer piece of paper and I will um, open my PayPal, open my checking account, open my credit card account. And I just like love on my, I get really intimate with my money. Sometimes I do this like two or three times a week. Most of the time I do this two or three times a week. Whereas in the past I did this like once a month maybe, but the more intimate I am with my money, the more, um, 
power I feel like I have more, I feel more empowered around it and more like knowledgeable. I know where it's all going. So I light my sage. I just like bring in this gratitude. Sometimes I do an invocation and I'll write down just kind of like what's happening. I'll transfer stuff where I need to transfer it. And then I'll usually journal a little bit too on kind of like how I'm feeling around money, if any weird shit's coming up um, and I'll work through it. And if I need to, then I'll also do like uh, money affirmations or listen to money frequencies. Like um, I, I love all Bob, I know you like Bob Proctor too, like all Bob Proctor stuff or Abraham Hicks uh, stuff as well. And uh, try to get a really high vibe around that money. And that's a really sacred thing for me that's consistent. I do that every single week. Um, there's other things I do like here and there, like I create crystal grids around money and also program launches, but weekly I'm just like getting intimate with my sage pen, pen and paper and my computer. So here are some takeaways. We'll just go through briefly, um, which are that energy comes first. So if you are not an energetic match for your desires, then you are potentially self sabotaging yourself. So stop sister. Stop self-sabotaging yourself. Kind of repetitive, isn't it? Stop self-sabotaging yourself. So energy comes first. It's so important that 80-20, in my opinion, is that we have to be an energetic match for our desires, or it's like we're put, we're closing the door on our our receive our ability to receive. But strategy does still matter. That's point number two. Strategy still matters. Like we still have to to bring in our masculine energy. We still have to take action. We still have to do. So it's, it's similar to kind of like the law of attraction and law of action, which is the law of attraction is going to be more of that energetic magnetism to what our desire is. And the law of action is, okay, now I actually go implement that, the 20%. So a picture of your green juice on Instagram does not convert. It does not convert without strategy. So not that you can't post your green juice on Instagram, but do it with strategy so that there's intention behind what you're actually doing in your business. And if you're like, I don't have an intention, I'm just posting my celery juice, then come talk to me and I can help you. But this, this energy comes first, in my opinion, and then strategy matters. All right, next is that you gotta do the inner work. You gotta do the inner work. I love you and I want you to be a magnet for your goals. So do the inner work, and that means working through your fears. We all have them. We all, all have them. I still have them. They still rustle up from day, day to day, time to time, but we, it, I work through them, and that's the big difference is that I'm not afraid of doing the inner work anymore. It is the game changer in the business. And then don't wait to ask for help. Don't wait in general. Like if you're, if you're the aspiring coach listening, don't wait. Just go do. You're going to learn so much through doing, but also don't wait to ask for help. And we make this so much harder than it needs to be oftentimes. And it's just making the ask. And sometimes people are more than willing to help you just as a friend or as a peer, as a colleague, as another woman in this field. And then there's also the opportunity to really, really invest in yourself and hold yourself accountable to your growth and your goals and what your desired outcomes are. So I hope all of this has been super helpful. You are all invited to the Empath Entrepreneur Mastermind. This is like a baby. This is actually the third round, which sounds so funny because like probably none of you have, have um, <laughs> even asked about this or um, not asked about this, most of you have probably never seen me talk about this. And it's because the last two rounds that I've hosted have been completely like under the wraps. They are literally like me DMing people I already know and being like, hey, you wanna be in this mastermind? And so this is the first time I'm actually even opening it up to the public. So everyone's invited versus just personal invitation where it has been that way before. And this is, my baby. It feels so, so good for me to host this mastermind. I absolutely love holding this space. The, I, I should have included some screenshots of our Facebook group because every, we were doing calls on Sunday um, evenings in the past round. And it was like Sunday evening, right after our call, everyone goes back into the Facebook group and they're like, I'm on fire. Oh my God. I have so many ideas. This is amazing. Oh my God. I can't wait for Monday. I've got this. Like, just like this 
fire, fire creative energy after each of our calls. Um, so maybe I'll include some of those screenshots in a follow up email with this recording, but the women in there are amazing and have been creating amazing freaking things, whether that's launching a podcast, growing their community, starting their community, um, building out their offers, and then their framework and foundation for their business. And then, of course, we work on the inner child and we work on the energy and we work on the energetic maximums and minimums to be able to bust through any of the energetic blocks or walls as well. So who this is for, this is for the IIN graduate who thought she thought once she graduated, clients would be just coming to her, but she's not seeing the results she wants. That was me. I was like, oh yeah, people will just hire me. But like, <laughs> no one was showing up. And it's not because you don't have anything to offer or because you don't have value. It's just because we need some strategy and energy around it. You might be the wellness coach who's passionate as fuck about her message. She's not sure how to monetize her offers. Maybe you've even had a few clients, but you just certainly don't have the framework for that five figure month yet. Uh, your limiting beliefs are screaming and you just can't get this whole manifestation thing to work for you. Maybe you're posting on social media all the time, but hearing crickets and you're not converting. You might also feel like you thought you knew what you wanted to do and you thought you knew who you wanted to help, but now you're questioning yourself because you haven't been getting those results. And you might, might even be considering throwing in the towel or getting another part-time job to support you because it's just not working out the way you planned or planned. And, and so again, this is the woman who wants help. She wants a container. She wants to be nurtured. She wants me in her back pocket for four months to be able to look at her sales page. Um, when people in my mastermind, women in my mastermind post their, their new sales page in the Facebook group, I go live screen share and I go through every line of your sales page and I give feedback on it. Um, we also have, let's go through that actually. It's four months long. We have one, uh, two and a half hour call per week. And there's also a recording, although I work with the women that are, it's a small group. So we find a time that works for everybody. So unless you have something come up that one week, you're there pretty much every single time. We, we had Sunday nights last round, but that was just last round. Uh, you get one-on-one -on -one hot seats. You, if you do miss a call and you let me know beforehand, you get an extra 30 minute call with me because if, because you weren't able to attend the, um, attend the master, the group call, uh, Facebook group, like I mentioned, where you're just asking questions throughout the week. We go through Q and A's, you get action steps or homework. Um, we also start each call with a meditation and we work a lot on the energy as well as the strategy. I like to, within that two and a half hours, kind of meditate, ground ourselves. Then I usually teach on something that I'm intuitively feeling every single person in the group can benefit from that week. And then we go through and we do hot seats and you're all learning from each other as well. It's, it's so good. I love it so much. Um, and then optional, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one calls with me at a really reduced rate compared to, um, any sort of like one-off calls or, um, other type of situation where you'd be, be, hiring me as a business coach, you get that discounted in here. And if anyone's ever thought about working with me one-on-one -on -one as their holistic business coach, you get this mastermind for free. So all of my one-on-one -on -one clients also get inside my masterminds for free as a bonus, just for something, a little food for thought. So really what I'm doing and asking you to do is to get out of your own way and let this be easy. If you feel like you're lost, if you feel like you're confused, if you feel like you're about to throw in the towel, or maybe you're showing up and you're like, I'm not going to give up, but I'm sick and tired of not getting the results that I want, then this is for you. Because I know what that feels like. I've been there. I know how to bust through the blocks. I know how to bust through the maximums to then achieve the bigger financial goals that you're seeking and, and searching for. And so I want, I want to support you. I want to be able to be in your back pocket and give you feedback, not only on things like sales pages, which is more of the strategy and the masculine, but also what are you emotionally feeling around a launch you might be going through? What are you emotionally feeling about life? Like that's why it's holistic business coaching. It's, it's a whole, it's a whole you, it's a whole you and all of you shows up in your business. And so we have to look at all parts of you when we coach you. So six women, one spot's already taken, which means there are five spots left. We start at the end of this month, the end of March. 
The investment is $111 per week. That's a payment plan, 444 per month, second option. So this is the fun part. I'm super energetic. And sometimes I personally like with my own coach to be able to have an energetic exchange of money each week because it feels good. Sometimes I'm like, take my money, take it all at once. <laughs> so uh, depending on what kind of person you are, there's different options for you. So the 111 and the 444 end up being the same price, but if you do pay in full, you save $172. Plus when you guys sign up uh, in the next 48 hours, you get an extra 45 minute VIP call with me one-on-one -on -one, where we'll go through the whole foundation of your framework, any offers you have, any ideas you have, places that you're struggling, that you're, you don't have clarity. I've um, found that that's part of my magic, especially in Launch Your Wellness Biz. I've been having all these, you saw 2.7% of my income last month was from these add-on calls where they're like little mini hot seats. They, those were just 25 minute calls, but those 25 minute calls have been like, they're breakthrough calls. All of a sudden these women are like, oh my God, you put into words what I had been trying to articulate for like a year. And so I found that that is, Part of my magic and I I'm just learning that about myself but it's something that I want to be able to offer other people is just helping them find that clarity thank you Tori I love you so thank you all for tuning in today if you guys have any questions shoot me an email sarah at autoimmunetribe.com about anything I'm always here to support you so that is in one of my group coaching programs masterminds you maybe you want to be a one-on-one -on -one client or you're just gonna stay in my community and soak up the free stuff that's totally fine too but just know that i'm holding this space for you and in your follow-up email from this training you'll get the recording as well as the payment links if you guys are interested in joining the empath entrepreneur mastermind oh you guys i love you so much uh, again uh, i would love to hear from you as well i'll ask you in that follow-up email what were your major takeaways from this training today and uh what it helps me to do I do this with my one-on-one -on -one clients at the end of our calls too. Uh, and I'm, I ask them like, okay, what are your major takeaways? Because some, you can hang out the phone and you can go and then you can go make your lunch and you can go about your day. But what I like to do is really like, we open this sacred container. Well, let's close the sacred container at the end as well. And so just in trainings like this on group programs on one-on-one -on -one calls, I like to invite you to think about what are our maybe three three of your major takeaways so that you are also processing in your mind that information. You're digesting it. You're integrating it into your life and you get to take it with you before you go make dinner or lunch or whatever that is. So think about what your takeaways were. I'd love to hear them if you'd like to share. And I am sure I'll be talking to all of you soon in the autoimmune tribe community. Oh, I just have to share Carissa's uh, takeaway before we leave, which is that I can't do it all by myself. Mm, so good. I love you guys. I will see you soon. Lots and lots of love.